150 years ago, on September 1st, 1862, the Battle of Chantilly was fought in Fairfax County, Virginia. The battle was a rear-guard action in which the Confederate Army attempted to cut off the Union Army's retreat after the disaster of Second Manassas, which had occurred just two days prior. Hi, my name is Matthew Flanagan, also known as the Historical Gamer, and I will be doing an after-action report from the game Take Command Second Manassas. The Battle of Chantilly is very interesting for me. First of all, um, it's one of the very few times in which Civil War armies met and fought in the middle of a thunderstorm. It was an incredibly fierce fight, and because of the rain, the fighting occurred a lot closer in, and there was more melee action than in many um, other Civil War battles. Um, the powder was getting wet often throughout the fight, and this made the firearms less effective, although thanks to percussion caps, there was still firing going on, but not nearly as effective or deadly as it usually would have been. And so you saw a lot more close-in, hand-to-hand combat, which is actually fairly uncommon for the Civil War. It's also uh, a rare instance in which the Union generals, at least early in the war, it's a rare instance where the Union generals on the field are very aggressive, um, have a reputation for being aggressive, and at least one of the two principal officers was a very competent officer. Um, both Union division commanders also end up being killed. In this scenario, the player takes on the role of General Isaac Stevens, um, the commander of one of the two Union divisions who were deployed. Now in this battle, both divisions are pretty small. Stevens' division actually consists of less than 3,000 men. All told, the Union only had about 6,000 uh, to confront uh, the Confederate commanding general, Jackson, who had about 17,000 men at his disposal. Stevens' division consists of three small brigades, uh, all roughly about 850 men, um, at least in this scenario. Your goal as the commander of Isaac's division is not so much to defeat um, the Confederates, you won't do that, they've got over 17,000 men, but to buy these retreating troops here, you see time to get out of the way, essentially, of, General's fl or of General Jackson's flanking march. Actually, after, shortly after the victory at Second Manassas, Lee, as usual, wasted little time in trying to exploit his victory there. He sent General Jackson's exhausted troops on a wide flanking march, and this battle is representing that the attempt of Lee to cut off the Union Army's retreat. Jackson's 17,000 men were confronted, as I said earlier, by about 6,000 Union troops, um, which did historically buy them enough, buy the Union enough time to withdraw, um, although at fairly significant cost. I'm getting my troops into position here per my orders. I want to get them all in line before I actually advance on the rebels. Lord knows if they outnumber me nearly three to one, my division itself by more than five to one, I need to make sure I go unorganized and uh, can give as good of an account of myself as possible. So I'm going to speed things up a little bit as I get my three brigades into line and um, we're just going to fast forward this a little bit. Alright, here we see I've now got my troops in position. I'm advancing with two brigades up front. One brigade will act as the reserve, at least initially, as I move forward. Um, as you can see off there in the distance, the rebels do occupy a wood. Looking to see if there's any more reinforcements coming. It looks like there are some forces coming down that that side. I did get a note from General Heinzelman, I believe it was, commander of the 3rd Union Corps, um, that there would be a couple of brigades of troops coming up along my right. Um, and there actually is a battery of artillery that apparently is under my command, but was not marching down the roads with me. So that could be useful. Um, I've taken, as you can see, when you get in close proximity to an objective with a officer, you take that objective, and as you can see, that star turned blue, meaning I'm now earning victory points if I hold that objective long enough. Um, you typically have to hold it anywhere between one to five minutes, and then you get a certain number of victory points. Um, the game is a little bit older. You notice the graphics are a little bit a uh, little bit out of date. Um, but it's still one of the premier Civil War uh, games uh, ever made. So I'm getting into position. I'm holding my objective. Still no uh, engagement so far, which suits me just fine. If I can take up a blocking position, I really don't care. Um, I just need to buy the army time, and by holding objectives, I earn points. Plus, if you look there, there are some rebel troops up there on the left. Oh, 
Well, my objective got moved, so now I need to advance straight on into the horde of rebel infantry, which I'm not really looking forward to, because um, you see up there on the left, there's rebels in the woods on the left, as well as straight ahead. If I advance straight in, I'll be exposing my flank to a rebel flank attack through the woods, and then through that cornfield, I believe it is. But, orders are orders, and I need to buy the army time as, uh... Stevens historically did. Um, so I'll put two brigades going forward there. I'll try and keep the one reserve brigade in reserve. That way if the rebels do come out of the woods and try and move on my flank, I can refuse my flank um, and uh, stop them that way. Plus, if my attack in the center needs any extra oomph, I can just use that brigade and uh, bring them in through my rear. So we'll get moving and uh, things are about to heat up a bit. Getting into position, we can take a closer look at my brigades as they move in. Marching almost like it's on parade ground. It's really amazing to think when weapons were already becoming as accurate as they were during the Civil War, that the average engagement was still roughly, uh, at least according to a couple of a couple of things I've read, and also um, it's the basis for the, the game, uh, setting the maximum engagement range for regular infantry at 160 yards is that the average engagement in the Civil War was still only about 140 yards. Not much further out than the typical Napoleonic Wars about 50 years earlier. The only difference is by this point the majority of arms in use by the soldiers were uh, rifled muskets. Um, the units in my command um, of my uh, three brigades, each brigade has three regiments in it, and of those uh, nine total regiments, seven are armed with Enfield rifled muskets, which was an imported British uh, rifled musket, uh, the second most po common weapon used in the Civil War. Only the um, American-made Springfield was more common, and they're very they're considered contemporary weapons. Um, but anyway, seven of my nine units have Enfields, and uh, two one have other weapons. One is Springfield rifles or rifled muskets and uh, one has Lorenz rifled muskets. The Springfield, as I said, was an American-made weapon. The Lorenz was an Austrian-made weapon, um, which is, interestingly enough, <laughs> there's a lot of history behind that weapon. It's really heavily debated about uh, amongst historians how effective it was, with some units claiming it was as good as the Enfield or Springfield, and other units claiming that it was a hunk of junk. Um, the batches seemed to vary a bit, given the fact that it was often wet arm, they were often surplus weapons that were sold. Anyway, enough of that. Um, I've got my infantry engaged now with the rebels here to the front. I'm going to keep pushing them forward. Really, my only hope is, in my opinion, to try and rush the rebels here in the center, break them, and then turn, forcing them into an uncomfortable position where they have to realign. I don't think I've got a very good chance of that, but... Um, it's what I'm going to try anyway, because if I'm the Rebels right now, and it's worth mentioning this as a game against the AI, uh, this game does not have multiplayer, um, but if I'm the Rebels, I'm going to see this Union flank just sitting here open. I'm going to rush through the woods as fast as I can to exploit that. I did get a report that a couple of brigades are going to come to support my right, which is definitely going to be helpful, um, hopefully in turning the Rebels out of their positions, but we'll leave one of the regiments back a little bit to the left to try and protect my flank a bit. Um, one of the, as I'm sure many of you listening already know, one of the big things with uh, Civil War tactics, you know, uh, your goal was always to turn your enemy out of their position, always to come in on their side. As you see, everyone's in long lines firing at, at each other, so if you can fire at the enemy when only a small portion of them can fire it back, you're going to have a huge advantage. So coming in on the side or the flank is obviously the most effective way to deal a much greater amount of damage than you yourself will take. I'm going to kind of try and leapfrog my units closer so that I've always got the rebels engaged and that I'm not marching through a long line of enemy fire, um, but that I am able to advance. So what I'm going to try and do is keep one regiment firing while another regiment close behind moves in front. I've abandoned the idea of a reserve here, although I am keeping my left a little bit further back so as to easier allow myself to refuse my line. Gonna see if that regiment can get around their flank. It does look... 
I, I don't know. It's hard to tell if there's any other rebels in the woods back there. But at least maybe we can get in on their flank, as I was talking about earlier, and maybe do a greater deal of damage, allow this regiment here to get closer and to do more damage, keep the pressure on the rebels here. Rebels do sort of have a salient here, um, which is a natural uh, disadvantage, um, where you have a small, kind of a spherical shaped if you will kind of like a U shaped point in your line um, because an enemy can always bring more more weapons to bear on you than you can on them when you when you're in the U and they're around you. you you can never put out as much fire when you're in the salient as the attacker of the salient can although they are bringing some of their infantry through the cornfield there to kind of narrow that salient and I'm not really coming in on the left so I'm not taking advantage of it like I should engagement is pretty hot and intense here. I wonder how uh, accurate this, uh, this simulation is at this point compared to the real battle given the fact that as I already mentioned this is all taking place during a thunderstorm um, and it, it's definitely widely reported that the musketry was not nearly as effective as it, as it could have been. Um, General Stevens is my character as I mentioned he was killed in this engagement his son was actually wounded here um, Stevens is an interesting character, someone worth reading up on. Um, very aggressive, very full of himself. Um, definitely thought he was bound for, for great things. Kind of similar to the other divisional commander who doesn't take part in this exact battle but is, is fighting off to our left or will be later, uh, General um, Philip Kearney. Although Kearney was a soldier soldier, he had been in the army for years, he'd actually fought in Europe and had resigned his commission in Europe to come back to the United States uh, when the Civil War broke out and fought for the Union. He was also killed in this battle. Uh, he was definitely a very competent general, but also incredibly aggressive. Um, both Kearney and Isaac did a great or not Isaac, Stevens, did a great job in holding the Confederates back Stevens' division actually routed a Confederate brigade in this battle, although I'm not having much luck routing any rebels at this point. I have at least taken that objective here. I could really use some support. But Stevens actually routed a rebel brigade and for the moment um, really surprised the rebels, um, forcing them to push in a lot of reinforcements. I'm going to bring up some artillery. Maybe I can kind of use the infantry as a shield and put some canister in to the rebels. Alright. That's not a good sign. One of my brigade commanders has that red exclamation over him, which means that um, his brigade is in trouble. Essentially, it means his unit's morale is, is low and they, they're not going to be able to continue fighting much longer, which is definitely not encouraging. Um, I'm already outnumbered enough as it is. I need every man possible on the firing line and I have no reserves. Doesn't look like anyone else is really coming up. We've got one regiment of support on the right. Another regiment's just sitting back there. Maybe bringing the artillery up will help a little bit. I'm going to try and bring the artillery in close, kind of like the artillery was used in Napoleonic Wars, where cavalry would be used to form the infantry into square to protect themselves against cavalry, and then horse artillery would be brought up to pound the vulnerable formations. Well, now I've got the rebels occupied here um, in an engagement, and I'm going to see if maybe bringing up some artillery and putting them a little bit on the flanks between the regiments, allowing them to fire canister into the rebels at close range might be uh, an effective tactic. We'll see. Alright, here comes the artillery up. If we can kind of get them between the regiments, let's, this regiment's decided to charge. So this part's playing out a little bit like history, maybe a little bit of uh, close-in fighting, some bayonet practice. Maybe we'll drive that rebel regiment back and have some success here. Take the pressure off some of the regiments to the right, and it definitely worked. So one rebel regiment has been routed. That's a bit of success. All right. Now we can kind of pour fire into this rebel unit on the left. There are rebel troops to the right. They're on my flank over there. Hopefully they decide to sit and do nothing. Otherwise I'm in some real trouble. <sighs> kind of being forced into a salient of myself. Not encouraging worth mentioning that um, 
This game right now is really a great buy. I believe it's under $10 anywhere pretty much you want to get it. Um, it's called Take Command Second Manassas. A little bit of a plug for the game here. Um, there's actually a lot of user-made mods um, for this game which make it look a lot newer. I'm just playing the stock game here. Um, so something worth checking out, madminute.com. Uh, madminutegames.com that is. Um, a lot of people there are still active. This game came out in 2005, so it is about seven years old. Um, you know, it's not a brand new game, but it is, it definitely is worth a look. A um, lot of other battles are included through player made mods, and um, definitely worth something worth checking out. Um, there's also a successor to it called Scourge of War Gettysburg. Um, not getting into the politics of uh, Mad Minute Games Breakup, but there is a, a successor if that's something that interests you, you can check it out. Um, but anyway, I got my artillery in position on the left. I don't know why those guns aren't getting up there. Sometimes um, there is a, a feature in here, you've seen me click a little bit, that uh, symbol on the lower right of the screen with the, the fist, and then there's a, like, a lightning bolt between the fist allows you to take command of units. I've used it a few times here. I now have to take command of that one artillery unit um, so that they are forced to listen to you. All units have some form of AI, artificial intelligence, and they will act on their own based on their commander's uh, attributes and the like. Um, so sometimes you've just got to, if you want them to do what you want them to do, you've got to take command. It's not quite like uh, Sid Meier's Gettysburg was back in the day where you had total control of units, um, which can be a good thing and a bad thing. Alright, let's take a look. I am firing canister into the rebels. I'm inside 200 yards, so my units will fire canister. Took a look just there for a moment. Um, firing on the 5th Louisiana. How many rounds of canister do I have left? But I just took a look at the ammo. That little uh, shell icon, the uh, round ball, tells you uh, how much ammo a unit has, whether it's infantry, artillery, cavalry, any unit, it'll tell you how much ammo you have if you click on them. Just get this position in here on the right. All right. Another round of canister fired. I wonder if that's double canister that it's using. It's inside 100 yards. Let's get them a little bit closer here. Usually canister seems to do a pretty big pretty big number on the rebels and it's definitely causing a fair number of casualties. It hasn't broken anyone yet, unfortunately. I don't know why I can only get one rub one gun in position on this though. That's been a little bit frustrating. Sometimes, like I said, you need to take command, but it can also be a little bit clunky. I've got my supply wagon coming up here, gonna resupply this uh twenty pound parrot gun. Um you don't have a whole lot of canister rounds that you start with. You tend to start with, I think, about 14. So if you're firing double canister, you're going to run through that real fast. So you need to keep supply wagons kind of near the front, especially for artillery in close-in situations like this. So we brought, we're bringing that wagon up. Where is that? Yeah, still running low on ammo. Okay, there it is. You'll notice I don't have, it looks like I have a lot of supply points, but you notice when that wagon gets close, they'll automatically rearm it and those supply points go down. Um, that's not that many, 5,000 something, that's not that many uh, supply points there. The supply is very low. Um, this is one of the few scenarios in the game where you might actually run out of supply. Um, mainly, I'm assuming that's to represent the fact that the Battle of Second, Man and Second Manassas was just fought, and prior to the battle, General Jackson actually burned the Union supply depot, so I'm sure by this point, after two days of continuous fighting, the supply of ammo was probably pretty low um, in the, the wagon trains. Trying to get another artillery piece up here so we can fire canister into the rebels with more than one gun and try and force them back. I'm actually trying something similar to what was supposed to happen at Gettysburg and Pickett's charge, General Lee actually wanted the artillery to move forward to support the advance. Um, that didn't really happen that way. It was probably pretty unrealistic to expect it to happen, but um, I don't know why those guns just fell back on their own. The one gun's certainly doing work on those rebels. Also, worth mentioning here real quick, uh, my guns are 20-pound parrots, which are actually very, very large field guns. I believe 
30 pound Parrot guns were the largest rifled guns that were used in the field. Um, I believe they were used at Antietam, which occurs just a couple of weeks actually after this battle. The 150th anniversary of the Battle of Antietam is coming up, which was actually the bloodiest day in American military history. I'll try and get these units in on the left here. Taking a bit of a risk by pulling these units forward. I'm leaving just one uh, computer controlled regiment on my far left to support my flank. But my regiments aren't doing terribly well, and if I can't get multiple guns in here, I got two now. But if I'm going to have any hope, I mean, look at the rebels. They've got like six regiments back there, and I've got four on the line. Gotta get more fire in them if I'm going to push them back. At least I'm still holding that objective. Getting points every uh, couple of minutes. Every five minutes I get a new set of like 150 points. The fight, casualty-wise, seems pretty close. Um, you get bonus points, though, when you route units. So for that one unit I charged and routed, I got some points. No, don't do that. Don't turn your back on the enemy. Ugh. A little bit of a clunky control interface here a bit. There's some more canister in the enemy about face. Oh no. There you go. You got the lightning bolt saying they're being flanked. You got the broken heart saying their morale is low. That unit's about to route. I need someone to replace them on the right of my whole right side will cave in. Um, they're already around me a little bit. And that stupid computer controlled reg regiment's just sitting in the woods there. Um... I'm going to bring these guys over to support my right. I can't just leave those guns hanging there out front. They're a little bit forward. They're going to get shot to pieces. That one computer-controlled regiment's going to have to hold my left. I didn't realize I still had one over there, but I guess that's my reserve. The Highlanders. It's actually a regiment that uh, the commander, the Highlanders, uh, was a regiment that Commander Isaac Stevens actually raised um, when the war started. Uh, he had to fight a lot to try and get a... Uh, command of more than a regiment. As I said, he was very full of himself, thought he was a great commander. Um, he never really had much of an opportunity to show tactical brilliance. He was certainly aggressive like Kearney, but he lacked the professionalism, I would say, that Kearney had. Alright. Get some artillery back there. If it was brought up a bit, that would help. Anyway, Highlanders in on the right. Protect there. Rebels are coming forward. Where are they going? There we go, canister right into them. Make them pay. Drive them back. Oh my goodness, they're going for the guns. Oh no, there's no way I'm getting there in time. Charge! Darn it! We got one. You know, I don't... I didn't realize the guns are just automatically removed. I don't know if that's to simulate spiking? Maybe spiking of the guns. That's why the gun just disappeared. You know, in Scourge of War, you can capture artillery and then capture it back. Um, so the newer game allows you to capture and capture back. I thought that happened in Take Command 2, but apparently not. So I just lost one of my two guns that were dealing canister fire. That was great. Is that a column charge by the computer? Seems a little bit ahistorical. Oh great, the regiment, the Highlanders are starting to starting to break. I fast forwarded about a minute and they're starting to fall back. <sighs> Hold on guys. Maybe falling back a little bit'll help. They can just reform. That lack of support on the right by the brigade which was supposed to come in and help me is really hurting me here. The only reason I'm getting pushed back is those regiments on the right are just flanking me and I don't have anything to counter them with. Maybe if we get this artillery in there on the right. If there's anything else I can command, nothing. Maybe if I get that one battery in on the left, maybe I can pull one regiment out and re reform it over to the right. I don't think it'll hold long anyway. This, this one's doing alright, just refill it with ammo. Alright, they're falling back. That's okay, they can stay there. Irish came down to about what, three fully functional regiments now. Yikes. Oh no, they're charging the guns. Charge. Oh, they got the gun. Oh no, not that. Oh goodness. So they got the guns. That regiment's charging the wrong regiment. This regiment's charging the right regiment. Oh, we'll see what happens here. Oh, they're retreating. Great. 
these guys gonna do? There's no way they can hold their ground even if they drive the rebels back, but at least... No, they're done too. Well, there goes my defensive line. I just lost two or three regiments, and now the Irish are retreating. Beautiful. Huh. I really like that uh, element of having different flags based on the states and, and cities, and, and not cities, but states and nationalities, if you will. Um, there's some pretty nice looking South Carolina flags over the left. That's another thing that is moddable, worth bringing up. Alright. Time to retreat. I don't have any functional units left, and all my guns have been captured. Um, hopefully I did enough to warrant a successful battle here. We definitely fought a pretty tough engagement, put up a good fight, held that objective for something like three or four cycles, so almost about 20 minutes. Got to try and reform what I can. You can't control your units while they're retreating, so we're going to have to see what comes of this. Alright, so I was able to reform a bit. Had a couple of regiments who were high enough morale. I'm going to resupply them. They're a little bit low on ammo, and you see there, there goes my uh, ammo. I'm totally out. Rarely happens in most scenarios in my experience, at least for the Union Army. They tend to be fairly well supplied, but as I said, it's to simulate a rear guard action after a very large multiple day battle, so the Union Army was probably low on ammo. There you can see the weapons tab, um, showing what type of weapon that unit has, as well as the amount of ammo. There's the artillery. I actually have one gun left, um, in addition to, I've formed up with uh, two batteries to my left of uh, computer-controlled guns, which were brought up by another unit, so... Give me a much stronger position. I might only have two regiments, but having almost, what, eight or nine guns in place certainly will make it a tougher nut to crack, especially because the regiments will be able to engage the rebels at uh, rifle range, hopefully stop them there, and then allow the guns to tear them to pieces. One battery can easily tear a couple of regiments, or one regiment at least, apart uh, with canister fire in this game. I don't see any re reinforcements coming though, so battle's got to be pretty close to being done. Um, looks like they're engaging again. There's smoke over there. They look like they're still kind of far out though. I'm not missing any units that I can tell. All right, artillery duel for a bit. Alright, so here come the rebels. Engaging them, they're inside 160 yards, which is the engagement range. They're charging in on column. They're almost acting like players do. Charging through fire in, in column formation. I haven't played take command in a while. I don't remember this being very common in the past, though. Maybe I'm wrong. It's definitely a tactic that players tend to use. Oh, great. Oh, well, at least I got, what, two rounds of canister off of them? That battery's done for. Captured. Gone. Charge. Well, charging is the best thing to do, given how tired and exhausted my men must be, but... Hey, yeah, we're sticking true to form to history, right? Getting most of our, uh, or a lot of, uh, close-in fighting, as I was saying at the start of the video. Come on, men. Drive them back. There you go. All right. Well... Yeah, I don't think the Rebels are going to have any chance of that. Not that there's any victory points of holding where I'm at, but the Rebels are going to have no chance driving me back out of where I am now. I've got seven artillery guns to my left, and they're going to have to push past these infantry. That's a lot of canister fire and rifle fire to go through. Two batteries is a very formidable task. One or two guns here and there, as you can see from my... Uh, my struggles are susceptible to charges, but when you've got seven or eight guns, that's uh, much less likely uh, proposition for any attacker. I need a couple more regiments which are reforming and are good enough to be thrown back into the fight. Alright, there we go. A major victory. So apparently I did well enough to delay the enemy so the army was safe to withdraw. Um, this was just the first half of the fight, really, though there was another engagement. There's a second scenario that starts an hour later. This one starts at 5 p.m. There was another scenario that starts at 7 p.m. that simulates when Kearney's division comes up and attacks. A very similar scenario, just in a slightly different part of the map. As you can see here, we're looking through um, the after-action report, which gives you pretty much any stat you'd ever want. Um, 
unit stats, division stats, men killed, enemy killed, um, leadership traits, Let's see which regiments did the best. They actually inflicted more losses on the enemy than they on me, so that's always a nice thing. Not quite the 3 to 1 that we were uh, outnumbered, or 5 to 1 that we were outnumbered, but um, when you're outnumbered 5 to 1 and you give more than you get, that's always a good thing. Gives you some unit highlights here, kind of tells you what some of the highlights were, routing units, gives you breakdowns of casualties up there. Casualties are pretty heavy, as to be expected in a battle like this. But all in all, we did pretty well. Major victory. First time I've actually played this game in quite a while, so pretty pleased with that. Um, but yeah, that's going to conclude this uh, after action report. Thanks for checking in. Um, that'll conclude the 150th anniversary uh, after action report of the Battle of uh, Chantilly. Um, until next time, I just want to thank uh, the War Gamer um, for having me on. Uh, this is my first uh, video with them and I hope to do many more. Uh, do some articles too. Um, but I'm excited to be part of the community and keep watching our videos. Uh, check out the website at www.wargamer.com if you're not already a frequent visitor. Um, if you did just stumble upon this video, definitely subscribe and check the website out. Um, it's been around for going on 20 years now. It's one of the preeminent war game websites on the entire internet. Um, it's been a long, as, as long as I can remember playing computer games and if you're interested in war games, it doesn't matter whether they're first person shooters, tactical shooters, anything like that, um, that website, this website, wargamers.com has you covered. So subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out the website, there's a great forum there. Um, thousands of members there, so uh, anyone interested in gaming, check it out. Uh, until next time, have a great day, and um, this is uh, Matthew Flanagan, the Historical Gamer, signing out.